You're still watching Sunrise at Sea. Thank you so much for joining us for our final segment of our show, which is our views. My name is Priva Elibaz, and in this particular segment, we're basically going to be sharing our views with you. And uh, we're going to be tackling an interesting uh, topic uh, this uh, very morning, but uh, you can, you know, connect with us on our social media platforms and let us know what, you know, you think about today's particular topic. And uh, that could be on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CTV Uganda. So make sure you do connect with us and you'll be able to... Um, connect with us. Uh, so basically today we're going to be looking at uh, emotional incest and before that I get, before I get into the definition of emotional incest, um, I was on Twitter and I came across a tweet and this gentleman, a Nigerian, innocently posted a screenshot of um, his call log, yes? And the topmost was my love with uh, two heart emojis and the next one was babe with just maybe like just one, um, one heart emoji. So he posted it innocently and he said he enjoys the kind of relationship that he shares with his mother. So uh, people, were in, people were in shock, like how do you refer to your mother as my love? And you also, you know, add, add all those, you know, um, heart emojis. At first he was not comprehending it and he kept defending himself like, you know, I grew up with, you know, my mother, he was, she was a single mother, she did everything for me. And for me, just calling her my love, it's like, you know, I appreciate this woman for everything, you know, that she did for me. So it kind of dawned on me at that point that people actually do not realize that they are dealing with emotional incest even when they're actually um, experiencing it. But just to define it for you, emotional incest can also be called covert incest. And it basically means an unhealthy family dynamic where a parent relies on their child for emotional and practical advice as well as support. Now, despite the name um, uh, incest, how, you know, people always attach incest to maybe like like having a sexual, uh, physical relationship with someone, this does not involve physical sexual abuse in any way, but it refers to that inappropriate emotional uh, closeness between a parent and a child. And most cases, it actually happens unconsciously, so the parents don't mean to cause harm to their children, and also the children do not know that they actually are um, experiencing the emotional incest. And uh, it's, it's very important that um, people understand that even if you do these things, they all, they all have lasting consequences, especially for the children, because uh, psychology goes on to say that um, physical, uh, a bigger pardon, emotional incest has the same consequences as physical um, incest or sexual incest or, you know, a parent, you know, sleeping with their children or their children or something like that. So if you are out there and you're wondering what are the signs of emotional incest, in parents, emotional incest can look like um, if you're crying and expecting your child to offer you comfort, when you're divulging deep and intimate secrets to your children, where, where you're requiring a one-on-one -on -one time with your child while discouraging their friendships, you know, with peers, you're always going on dates with your children and you're not allowing them to, you know, um, have a life of their own. Uh, parents also, you know, tend to show jealousy when their child spends time away from them. Then also uh, sharing responsibility for adult decisions uh, such as finances, employment or where to live, as well as expecting compliments for, or praise from, uh, from your children. While it does not um, involve you know, the physical incest and whatnot, it, it, research suggests that it sometimes enters the sexual um, territory. So this happens when you find like a parent is talking about their own sexual you know, encounters. And on top of that, after dis disclosing their own sexual encounters, they go ahead and you know, beg you to also you know, divulge your own uh, sexual you know, encounters. So maybe you want a parent who is just you know, going to draw boundaries and tell you, know, stay away from the bad boys, don't do this, don't do that. But here they are begging you for you know, sexual encounters. So that can also be a way of how emotional incest uh, manifests in a sexual um, type of way. But um, the very first question that I'm going to ask the ladies which are, who are joining me this very morning, and we have Aggie Wasi as well as the Apollo Sarah, I'm going to get into it and ask them why emotional incest happens in the first place. Okay, well, um, <laughs> um, additionally, if you're out there and you're wondering uh, how some of the signs might actually uh, manifest in your life as a child is if you're put in a position as a caregiver when you're actually a child. For example, you're going to ignore your own needs in favor of your parents' needs, and also you're going to find yourself missing out on child-appropriate activities, such as you know, extracurricular activities or time with your friends, and you're also going to find yourself feeling responsible for the emotions of others. And later on in life, you're going to find yourself um, developing these people-pleasing behaviors or trouble even you know, saying no to people. And uh, or lastly, you find yourself you know, having uh, that love and hatred for you know, other people relationships like you almost envy the relationships that your friends have with their parents so Agi let mm -hmm. us know what you think um, why I does emotional think, incest happen I think emotional incest happens for different reasons um, one can be maybe divorce 
if parents divorce, you find, um, well, I do know of a few examples whereby you find uh, this mother d uh, divorced with the father of the child, and they now, they, they, put, they, they get more attached to their children for the fact that they, they want to fill that void. So you find you're very attached to your children. I know of a certain lady who goes out with them. Um, the daughter out to the bar in the night you can only imagine um you know dressed the same way as the daughter by the way mm -hmm. you know um sharing all those experiences i can even imagine maybe if they're like men hitting on them and all that they're you know they're sharing all those experiences that in the right in the right setup or right setting you wouldn't share with your child so i think for me it can be an issue of divorce um it can be an issue of infidelity some parents when, you know, some women when their husbands are cheating on them or some men when their wives are cheating on them, they resort to focusing more on their children. They always talk about, talk about I'm focusing on my children. I couldn't care less what my husband is now doing, you know, outside They're there. my world. So, yes. And the moment you put yourself, like, entirely in your child's world, that means you're going to know, you know, um, more about them than, than you did before. You'll find yourself, you, you'll start with the small conversations, you know, as parents, uh, as a parent to the, to this child. But before you know it, you'll be talking about, you know, who their boyfriends are, mm -hmm. who they are, you know, trying. All the, before you know it, it gets deeper because you're, you're, con, um, you're creating this connection. Earlier you talked about um, putting yourself in a situation where you are depriving your child of time with their friends their because friends. you want them entirely to yourself. Which means you're going to be sharing in all the conversations that they would rather have with their friends. And also, I think, <laughs> I think it also comes to the issue of abandonment. Um, mm. I don't know how a grown person, you know, when you're grown and you have children, you still have abandonment issues, you know, from, from back in the day. If you, let's say your parents abandon you and now you choose, you're like, um, moving forward, if I have children, I want to have, you know, a very strong connection with them. So I think... There, there, there are so many factors, but that's what I would think. Okay. Uh, for me, I think there's a very um, thin line between being a good parent and then diving into emotional incest. Because a lot of people don't even know how to parent. Everybody is just... It's, it's a trial Learning process for everybody. Mm. You understand? It's a trial process for everybody. And uh, some parents get into this position because you're trying to overcompensate for what you lacked or trying to overcompensate because another parent, this, you know, something has happened to their child. So now you're in a place where you just want to do it all. Some parents want to be their parent and want to be their child's friend. We have had a number of people say that. Um, Steve, uh, Steve Harvey actually said this one time. He's told his kids that I'm not your friend, I'm your father. And for him, it's because I think he has grown, he's studied, he's learned, and he continues to, you know, broaden his... Um, his, his, and expand his knowledge on, on parenting. So he now knows where the boundary is. And a lot of parents just don't know where to draw that boundary mm. because they're like, my child shouldn't keep anything for me. <laughs> you get, you should, whether you're having a relationship, whether you're now starting to have sex, whatever the case may be, don't, you know, don't mm. hide anything from me. And that is how a parent will slowly cross into emotional incest. And also the bigger thing, the biggest reason as to why emotional incest happens is because the parent puts their needs first before the child's mm -hmm. before the child's needs so they want the child to keep on reassuring them they want the child like Aggie you say to keep on filling that void I want like it is me I am the parent I come first I know better so whatever you are going through or whatever you think you know you don't know so it mm -hmm. is me first then you that is how this all comes into play well, I totally agree with, you know, what the ladies uh, shared, but looking at some of, you know, the other reasons as to why emotional incest actually happens is that um, a fractured family dynamic can actually push a parent to actually uh, practice emotional incest subconsciously. Now, emotional incest will often happen when something disrupts or damages the parental relationship. Now, a number of life or relationship uh, stresses might uh, play a role. So if you have conflict, conflict, I beg your pardon, related to um, infidelity or financial issues or work concerns, uh, a toxic divorce as well, death of the other parent, physical or mental um, concerns including you know chronic illnesses as well, depression and substance use disorders, all these things can force uh, parents to find themselves you know practicing emotional incest because they want to feel that sort of you know comfort or support uh, from uh, from their children. But uh, 
it also goes on to say that uh, parents who lack supportive adult relationships may oftentimes feel lonely and unsure of where to turn to when navigating overwhelming emotions and other day-to-day -day difficulties related to these challenges that I've just mentioned. So as a result, they turn to their children to get that sort of, you know, um, support and uh, comfort. But um, the other reason as to why emotional incest actually happens is that the learned parenting styles now, we all have just generations you know, that have come before us. So you find that you, know, you don't know any better. This is how your parents raised you. Your parents were very protective. Your parents wanted to share any and everything with you. And here you are in your adult life and you just don't know how you can treat you know, uh, your children any better. And the other bit is that cultural and socioeconomic factors also cause um, emotional incest in our lives. Now, the, there is an example of the Turkish culture and they say, it is said that parents in the Turkish culture often consider it fairly typical to discuss day-to-day -day concerns and difficulties with their children. They also favor traits like, in, like dependence and loyalty over, in, over being an independent kind of person. Then they also think of their children as both extensions of themselves and their future caregivers. So this dynamic happens frequently in you know, the Turkish uh, culture, but much as they emphasize these values, which are good values, of course, loyalty is a good value, um, uh, uh, dependence is also a good value because you need people in your life but at the end of the day that high level of parental involvement in your child's life and you know uh, focusing on them and relying on them for that emotional support can uh, lead to damaging um, damaging consequences later on in the future so ladies what do you think are some of the effects of uh, emotional incest especially both for the children as well as the parents because you realize that um, children actually suffer the most yeah. as a result of emotional incest um, I would think first of all is you miss out on child appropriate activities because if you are, if you are like 10, I don't want to think that there's a parent out there who would sit down a 10 year old and start telling them their deepest secrets. Is that even, is that true? Could, it happens. You think that happens? Yes. Yes. Then I think you're taking away time for the child. If they are back from school, maybe they are, you know, they, they go to their school and they're back from school, that time when they should be, you know, um, interacting with their other, you know, their friends, you're sitting them down to tell them these deep conversations. You're taking away from their childhood memories. You're taking away, you know, from, from what they could share with their friends. So I think for me, definitely children will have to lack in that area. And the other thing is, um, I think it puts uh, children in a position of putting their parents' needs before, before theirs. their own needs. Because yeah. we are very attached to our parents. Well, I, I would say that about myself. I'm very attached to my mom. And if I see that she's a little bit sad in any way, and this uh, dated back in the day, I think even when I was in high school, I'd be very bothered, you understand? So in that moment, what mattered was my mother. Is she well? Is she doing well? That's what uh, mattered. So yes, you find you're putting yourself in a position where you're, you're sidelining your needs and uh, in favor of your parents' uh, your parents needs right. and i think the other thing uh, for the on the part of parents the effects are i think you just fail to move on as a person let's say you had a divorce let's say you know um your 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 partner okay there's an a case of infidelity and here you are attached to your child you just won't move on. Let's say if, if you want to get married or, you know, to to have other relationships, you may not be able to get those relationships because you're fully attached to this person. Fully invested. You, you're fully invested and you find more comfort, you know, more more uh, stability with your child. You may not you may not really move on with your life because you're, you're comfortable in this zone. And the other, uh, well, I do think that it's very selfish at the end of the day for a parent to put their child in that position. Yeah, and um, deter them from pursuing their, you know, their own things in life because they have to be fully invested in your life to take care of your emotional needs. I don't want to think their parents who would put their children are in a position of taking care of their physical needs. Is that even a thing? Oh yes, it happens. That's also part of That's emotional incest because yeah, they are complaining. You know, my job is doing this, my job is this and that. I'm not getting paid. This, so you find you're complaining to your child, and maybe even if they are 20 years old, or maybe they have you know started their first job, mm. you are putting them in a position where they just have to share their small salary with you because now they feel obligated they feel ob obliged to you know provide for their parent mm. i mean they love you so much i don't want to see you suffering yes yeah. so maybe in one way or another it can actually lead to physical incest because that is how it happens we we get attached to people that we spend most time with mm -hmm. we get attached to people that make us feel whole or that make us feel happy so you find your you could find yourself in a position where you're now getting feelings for your parent it's do you consider upset. physical very abuse upset. Very, yes it is absolutely emotional and physical abuse for me i don't think that emotional incest is a good thing in any way.
Okay. Um, I think Agi has said it all. I think the biggest uh, downside to it or biggest effect is that it's going to cause a lot of stress to the child because now you have a child who is supposed to be living their best life, being carefree, is now worrying about adult problems mm -hmm. that they do not even have solutions to. It will also push a child into you know, addiction because you're now trying to find a way to cope. You feel helpless because you cannot help your mother, you cannot help your father, you cannot make the situation any better. So you now find yourself indulging in destructive behavior to help you cope, to help you, you know, take away your, your mind away from all the things that are happening around you. There is no positive to this because, but then again, it all goes down to culture and how people are raised in society. Like I said earlier, we don't know, a lot of people just don't know any better. They find parenting systems in place and they just keep on carrying that on instead of broadening their mind, learning, studying, draw boundaries and trying to find healthy ways on how to raise their children. It goes down to generational curses and you wonder why this keeps on happening and happening and happening in your family because those are, those, uh, you know, horrible patterns, those uh, those bad behavior patterns that have kept on, you know, being passed down from one generation to another. Uh, it's uh, when Steve Harvey said that parents need to understand that you are a parent and not your child's friend. I think that is very important. That's where you draw a boundary. Your children. It is none of their business what is going on in the parent's life. If you're struggling financially, if you are having trouble in your relationships, if you are dealing with substance abuse, that is none of your child's problem because that is not the bargain. They didn't ask to be born. They didn't ask to come into a world where you are having this problem. So mm. why are you going to your child? Go seek a therapist. Please go date an adult. Please <laughs> go f make friends, all right? You, you are not your child's friend. You understand? You are their mother, you are their father, and your role is to guide them, support them, and nurture them. That is what you do. You're not there. It's, it's all about draw boundaries. As soon as my son was able to start dressing himself, I have... I, I am not in the room to see his nudeness when he's dressing. He even says, Mommy, excuse me. Mm, that's, that's as in nice. get out, mm -hmm. mommy excuse me I need to dress up. You mm. understand? So keep drawing boundaries because as a parent your role is to guide, nurture, protect, support. You're not there to be a BFF. You're not there to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to <laughs> you get, you're not there to carry them for, for brunch and cocktails. No. <laughs> you understand? Well, that is well, not well. it. They I, have friends for that. I agree with you know oh, what all the ladies um shared and in the interest of time, I'm just going to, you know, just give briefly some of the ways that you can heal if you are someone who has actually experienced um emotional incest. Number one, practice setting, you know, uh, boundaries. The key sign of emotional incest is the brain breakdown of boundaries between the parent and the child. So if you've been enmeshed with a parent, establishing healthy emotional boundaries may feel foreign or strange at the least. So make sure you can, you can tap into that, it may feel strange, but at least it is possible. So uh, find a way of how you can practice uh, setting boundaries. The other bit is you can talk with a therapist. Uh, some forms of therapy are particularly suited to help you heal from emotional incest. So, you know, get down with a, a therapist, sit down with them, especially those um, therapists that talk about, you know, family dynamics, family relationships, they might have the best advice for you. You can also try inner child um, healing, which involves talking inwardly to yourself. Basically, you're imagining yourself talking to your 10-year-old self, to your 11-year-old self. How would you talk to them? How would you support them? How would you show them compassion? Those are also, you know, some of the ways that you can actually heal from uh, emotional incest. The other bit is, you know, find your support network, create the space between your parents and you. It won't be easy, but it can happen. So find your own support network, your friends, and, you know, share share with them what you experienced and you know help they, they will also understand that they're not supposed to you know cross your boundaries then the other bit is that you can journal yes emotional incest can make it difficult to recognize and accept your own thoughts and feelings but allowing yourself to practice getting your thoughts and emotions onto the page journaling will definitely help you to exercise those muscles that will help you you know deal with uh, emotional incest well that's all we had for you um this morning and uh yeah keep watching sunrise at sea <laughs>